Well, this week on Nation, we're talking about the big push. Uh, some salt and pepper. No, not really. I'm not singing. But either way, we're talking about the big push. It's coming into fall. What can you do? Hopefully, you get some tips and tricks from it. Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com. And of course, WCR Nation, you're here. What's up? This is a podcast about the awesome world of window cleaning, pressure washing, and everything else service related. We only focus on the business side of things. And you, my friend, are here. If it's your first time, check it out. Go back, listen. We are like, you know, 60 hours almost of this. We've been doing it now for two years. You got tons of content to catch up on. Go and do that. If you are one of the awesome, cool kids, super awesomeness people who order all your supplies through me, what is up? It is because of you that I get, as Tyler uh, Phipps said, brand name school supplies. Uh, but it's awesome. Every week you guys uh, order through me, you send me texts, you do whatever, and it, it makes my day. And you guys love to tell me what kind of brand name things I get to buy with the commission money from the sale. So if you want to help me out, Order your supplies for me, big or little, all of them. I want to order all of them. You can even text me and say, hey, I want to put an order in. You can call me. Hey, I want to put an order in. Or just go shop all night. Put it in your cart. Make sure you're logged in at windowcleaner.com. And then just text me like, yo, Jersey, uh, my cart's ready. And at the end of this episode, we're going to give you a code for 5% off. Now, you can only get that if you order through me, which is also like a virtual high five. Costs you nothing extra. To do so so listen to the end but a couple of quick shout outs i want to say what's up to brad ivy uh jared strickland what's going on man uh mark reinhardt second the man from a1a coolest trucks ever i don't know why i love your logo so much but anyway what's up to mark uh brian uh mason what's going on man and of course tyler uh phipps you're the guy who said the uh the brand name school supplies i usually hear duplicates that one is brand new so what is up so we're talking about the big push today the big push meaning that fall is coming the four letter word is not fall i'm telling you people a lot of you guys out there who if you're in california we're not talking to you okay i shouldn't say all of cali but like if you're the central cali or anywhere else that you well we don't have seasons we're busy all year round you know what I'm not even going to say it, but uh, this isn't for you. But this episode is for everybody else who has a seasonal business. Now, even if you're in halfway decent area, I'm in North Carolina. We Our winters are like, you know, if it, if it hits in the high 20s, it's like, whoa, whoa, stuff is freezing. People leave their water running because they don't understand. But anyway, um, if you're there, the season still happens. Winter is slow, just like the middle of summer is slow. Now, yes, there's different, you know things that can contribute to that and change it and all that fun stuff. But that is, for the most part, kind of how it happens. Now, pushing fall gets you winter money. Remember, you can't necessarily force people to go and get your services when they're not ready to buy. And they're not ready to buy in winter, usually, for the most part. So you have to have everything pushed in fall so you can book as far out and into winter as you possibly can. But there's a couple quick ideas that I uh, love to think about this time of year. I love to do the push. Um, This is kind of like, you know, if we do get a summer slowdown, this is the big push, the big time. And it literally is starting this week. Stuff is just starting to crack off. And hopefully you guys are just as busy. Now, I heard a lot of people that say uh, fall's here. So we know we're just, we're going down, you know, fall so slow. What? What? That's crazy to me. Fall should be your second busiest season. 100%. If I'm wrong, comment down below if you're watching on YouTube. Um, By the way, subscribe if you're not, but give us a thumbs up on this video and comment. You have to comment if you're watching on YouTube. Why do you have to? Because it makes me understand that people are actually out there watching these videos. And if you're listening on any of the podcast platforms, take a second after this and just leave us a review. Say what's up. We got like 49 reviews or something on iTunes. I want them all over. I want this to be an awesome, awesome podcast uh, that everybody sees, people appreciate. So write a review, whatever, anyway. But fall can be a huge, huge push. We're like squirrels, really, right? So 
you know, we need to get it when we can for the times that we don't. And the times that you screw yourself, really, is when you don't have the funds through the rest of the year. So now is the time to get all that money so you can have a fat bank account going into winter because you never know when spring is going to start back up. Now, I'm originally from Wisconsin. I had a business there for almost 15 years, which, by the way, it's sold. It's done. I was in a four-year buyout, and it is done as of September 1st. Woot, woot. Actually, I really like just getting a paycheck for four years. But anyway, it's done. Awesome on him. But in Wisconsin, it's different. Like, Thanksgiving time came. It stopped. After that, we just didn't have houses, hard, full week of houses, uh, until probably April-ish, if not closer into May, depending on some years. That's crazy. You have to plan for that. There's a couple ways to do it. And if you understand it and you plan for the worst, guess what? Get you know, even if you get out and you got a few thousand, you got ten thousand fifty thousand dollars in your bank account coming out of spring, sweet. You know what that does? Or going into spring, I should say. Because you plan now, you'll have money to advertise in spring. You should only advertise when people are buying. Otherwise, you're wasting your money, right? But here's a couple things that we could certainly do. And maybe we'll help you. And hopefully they are. Comment down below if they do. But anyway, uh, the first big thing that you have to do, and you should have done it yesterday, but today's also good, is print everything. Everything that you're going to be printing, your direct mail, your postcards, your door hang, everything needs to be printed now. Because you're not going to print anything else until spring money. Because no one, I guess, most no one is in the middle of winter like, oh, I don't have a lot of money. I'm going to go ahead and get some printing done. It just doesn't happen for the most part, right? So print it all because you're going to use it all. Now's the big push. You're going to advertise now as hard as you did in spring because now is when it's striking. People are going to start getting calls again. I am telling you that every six months, people, they're going to be in spring and fall. That's common. What time? When should I get it? Spring and fall. Spring and fall. Fall is here. It should be almost as big as your spring. So get everything printed. Here's a couple things that you should get printed as I keep hitting my computer and making it shake. I'm sorry. But uh, here's a couple things. First off, you should be printing your EDDM. If you haven't done an EDDM, look it up. Uh, take uh, quick you know, classes. Watch some YouTube on it. EDDM stands for Every Door Direct Mail. It is a USPS, the Postal Service. It is a program from them. Go to uh, eddm.gov or something along those lines. It's somewhere. Search it on Google. Find it. It'll explain it. But it basically, it's when you give them all of the stuff, you do all the legwork, and they just hand out every piece. Super cheap per piece. I mean, super cheap. You can have it printed and sent out for like a quarter a piece. It's crazy. But anyway, you want to have all that printed. Why? Because printing takes time. Stacking takes time. And getting those things out there you should be starting really, really, really soon. Go and get that printed. By the way, I just thought of this, and this is not because it's new. I didn't think about it, but we do printing now. In-house printing that you can actually order directly through me. 862-312-2026 is my number, by the way, if you want to uh, order. Um, but get your printing done. That is huge. Also print up your door hangers. The Pardon the Glare ones are great. Um, that is the one from the WCRA, if you remember. But that one is what you do. You're five up and five downs. So again, five up, or five downs means that you're doing five houses all the way around the property. Um, so you're doing two to the left, two to the right, five across the street. And that is um, going to be when you do jobs for somebody, you're going to go and do all the five up, five downs. That's going to kind of help people know you're in the area, but also it's going to show them that um, you know, you are there to do it. Everybody wants to keep up with the Joneses. Uh, five up, five downs are super valuable to do, so make sure to do those. Um, and then another one that people really overlook because it's it seems old school, but I'm telling you it works awesome, are 4 by 6 postcards that are reminder cards. A simple 4 by 6 card. Simple 4 by 6 card. That all they have is a picture on the front, you know, maybe it was some window cleaning. Something catchy, it doesn't matter. I used gutter squirrel for a while, a bunch of other stuff. Something to get catchy. But on the back, it just says, hey, it's time. It's fall. Let's get you scheduled. Super simple, but you send those to existing clients to remind them that you exist. You can send those out every four times a year. 
I'm telling you, it's cheap enough. You're spending money on marketing. If you spend, say, you know, $200 on marketing and you get, even get one back at 200 or 249 or 299 it doesn't matter. You're making money. It made sense to do that because all those other people are still finding them. I've been at houses that have all my stuff on the fridge. It's awesome. Put a coupon on there. If you want to get a little bit of extra kind of oomph on those, put a little coupon, $20 off service, something like that. Make sure to do dollars, not percentages, because dollars have value. Percentages have to be, you have to pay money to get a percentage off. So that's a mindset thing. But that's another big one. Do that and get it ready to kind of be sent out because those should go out with the next thing we're talking about and that's the call list now i'm not going to call you out you know who you are but i had somebody who said that they don't like to bug people they don't they think that it's bad for them to call people and say hey would you like your service they think it looks desperate that is absolutely i'm sorry the most rid- ridiculous thing I have ever heard in business. Ever. Ever. Because that's what business is. It is 100% your job to remind the people who use you to use you. Now, it's not spammy. I didn't say call them every day, every week, every two weeks. No. You call them twice a year, spring and fall. And that's part of the reminder. With everything else that is less uh, in their face as a call, you can send emails out regularly, at least once a month. You send postcards out at least quarterly. But the call list, which people are like, oh, I don't like, yes, because I'm telling you right now, more than not, people go, oh man, thanks for calling. I, I would have forgot. It would have been too late. I would, they're happy because all I do when I call, I print out every single customer I've had and I weed out everybody I've done in the past month, two months, whatever you want, right? And I print them all up and um, I say, hey, it's Jersey calling from Window Cleaning Resource, if you will. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick call. We're putting together our fall schedule and I didn't see your name on there. And I was wondering what day a week works best for you. Super easy. Now, I didn't ask him, do they want to be on? It conveyed the information. I'm getting a better close rate because I didn't say, hello, uh, this is Jersey. Uh, can I talk to you? No. Oh, uh, if they say yes and you go, oh, would you like to be on the schedule? No. Like anything you can reduce the word no or opportunity for people to say no, the better the mindset is on them. Because again, if somebody doesn't want to do something, there's nothing you're going to say. You're not manipulating them into saying yes. It's just ease of use. They're already wanting to say no. People, when you talk to them for the first time, they got their you know arms crossed. That's because they all have a wall. And no is the way to end the conversation and get them back in the comfort level of not talking to you. Right? So you don't, don't do that. Hey, it's Jersey from XYZ. We're putting together our fall schedule. And I didn't see you on there. I just wanted to know what day a week works best for you uh, and if you had any preferences. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. No, thanks for reminding me. We're going to give you a call. That's what they all say. Um, yeah, uh, you got anything open on a Friday? We do, actually. Next week, uh, Friday, we have an appointment at uh, between 12 and 1. How does that work for you? Oh, absolutely. We'll put you on there. Uh, Price-wise, if you're changing for your year or your fall, usually it's not a price change in the fall. It's usually a price change in the spring. That's at least what I do. Um, but uh, prices will stay the same this fall. Uh, is there any other services that you wanted to add? So I already got them booked. Now I'm going into service. Is there any other services you wanted to add? Remember, we do gutter cleaning. We do house washing, we can do all of that, and we also offer snow services in the winter. Again, if you're in an area that gets snow, that's something. But see how I worded it. Gutters are the most immediate that they're gonna think about. Snow is the last, because it's fall. They're not thinking of snow yet. But that's how I word it. Oh yeah, oh I didn't know you guys do snow, or gutters, yeah. Man, we're not ready for gutters though when the trees fall. No, absolutely, that's why we're booking now for gutters because we have to plan for the season, but we start November 1st on the gutter cleaning. And uh, you know, even if a couple leaves fall after we clean them, it's still a heck of a lot better than getting clogged all winter and getting those ice dams. Now, you know, leaves don't really cause ice dams, but they stop water from draining properly, which can in turn cause ice dams. That's how I word it, just like that. And people are like, wow, yeah, that's it. That's really kind of big. That's that's a good idea. 
So call list is an opportunity for you to get in front of them, get them direct. I'm going to leave a message and then I'm going to also highlight it on my list because I'm making a little call list out of QuickBooks. I'm going to make a, a, a highlighter of ones that I left a message on because guess what? Guess what I'm doing next week? I'm going to call those people back. Hey, it's uh, Jersey calling from XYZ. Uh, left a message last week. I didn't hear back from you, so I thought I'd try again. Just that simple. Be nonchalant. Don't be salesy. You don't have to be salesy. You don't have to get out of your comfort zone, but I'm telling you, if you go get it, you will be so much better fed. It's the same reason why lions chase their prey. You know, why cheetahs are fast. Like, there is something different from you going to get it than for waiting for it to come to you. What if it doesn't come to you? What if people forget? People will forget you. You think they remember you, they don't. They remember you until you're gone and then they don't think about you again until their windows are dirty, I'm telling you. There's not anybody in this world, unless it is your spouse, and even then maybe, but that is thinking about their window cleaner. Just, ah, I wonder how Jersey's doing. I hope he's doing good. And that's in the middle, like, you know, July they're thinking that. No one, no one does that. You think they do because you're personable at the time and they really like you and like you probably think only your customers, they need to have you there. They wouldn't be able to have it. That's not how it is. They're personable with you. They may remember you when you're there. Oh, how's your kids? Ah, oh, you got a new dog last time, right? They may remember that then, but they're not thinking of you when you're not doing service. So you need to remind them, even if it's a subtle reminder. That's where the call list is. The call list, you will book out weeks of work. I'm telling you, we look forward to our spring and fall call list every single time because it works so well. So many people are prompted to then book. So many people are then reminded and so many people are upsold to new services. Speaking of new services, gutter cleaning is huge. If you're not doing gutter cleaning, gutters are probably one of the worst things we could do they stink, they're full of like poop smelling water and gross hand staining disgustingness. But guess what? There's a huge market for them. My minimum gutter charge is $249. If you have a little house and that's too much for you, that's fine. I'm not stepping over dollars to go do the worst job we possibly can think of. If there's a worse job than gutters, po post it down below that you do. But gutters for me are the worst. When I realized the gutters were the worst job humanly imaginable in our industry was we had one is on the corner of a house. Uh, and of course I'm like, oh, I'll take, I'll do that. It's in the corner of the house. I know it was plugged. I put a hose up there to just start flushing the downspout, right? I put the hose up into the downspout from the top to kind of flush, see what it's coming down, set my ladder up. It's not flowing. There's a couple leaves kind of coming out barely flowing. Ah, oh, man. It's definitely clogged. I got to go up there and snake out the downspout if that's what I'm doing. Go back up on the ladder. I reach up to the, the top and pull on the gutter just slightly just to kind of look over. And the gutter was not hooked on that side at all. The, the bracket had pulled out and it just pulled the whole gutter down all on my face, in my mouth. It was horrible. It was absolutely the worst. And I realized at that point as I'm sitting there, wet, smelling like squirrel poop, it's not really, but I had a tech that, that he was convinced that's why they smelled so bad. Sitting there in putrid water. It was the first job of the day. It's in my mouth. I know for sure I'm going to be, you know, sick and get, you know, some weird disease or whatever. I just sat back and said, this sucks. This is horrible. I upped my prices that day. Uh, gutter vac makes it so much easier. There's just so many things to do. Anyway, now that I've sold gutter cleaning, so stinking well, gutters are awesome. Why are gutters awesome is because everybody needs it ASAP. They need it now because it's getting to be fall. It is a floater job, meaning you can put it on a floater board, which by the way, if you're not using a floater board, a floater board is a whiteboard. For me, it just sits right behind my desk, right like that. And on there just says float. Any job that nobody has to be home for, I put on a float. So gutters, huge float that fills up space. Say if it, uh, people, somebody had to cancel or reschedule or the guys are moving fast or they get back at five, but you got two hours of light and they're just hungry. They want more. They want some overtime. Throw them out on these float jobs. And that is what gutter cleaning is. 
great to put in there. I do not hard book gutter cleanings ever because nobody has to be home. You really, really don't. Just say, hey, we're going to be there. You do the gutter cleaning. Wait until we get the gutters done before you turn off your water. That's about as much. But gutter cleaning is huge. It's a huge add-on. People who have trees need gutter cleaning. Need it. Even people with gutter guards need gutter cleaning because no gutter guards work right. So it's a huge, huge add-on. You have ladders. Not that everybody wants to go on ladders, especially if you're in water fed and you're not on ladders. Maybe it's not something you want to do. Maybe it's something you want to invest in a gutter vac system. Absolutely incredible gutter vacs. Then you're just sucking it out from the ground. (laughs) Just sucking it out, walking around the place, collecting your money. It's awesome. But what gutter cleaning is, and I'm going to put this out there for a lot of you because a lot of you are like, oh, but then you got to get the grit and the sand. But here's what it is. Gutter cleaning is like snow removal. The point of gutter cleaning and snow removal for that fact, but we'll get there, is not to make it so you can eat out of the gutter. It's not to make it so that there's not one speck of anything in it. That is absolutely not the job of gutter cleaning. Gutter cleaning is to clean the gutters out enough that they won't get clogged. Any of you who are like, oh, well, then I I flush it out with a hose afterwards and I use a soft bristle brush to scrub the bottom of it and come back over it with, with Windex, you are killing yourself for nothing. There's no reason for that. A gutter. No one will ever see in the gutter. Nobody cares to see in the gutter. All people want is to make sure it's not going to clog. So that's what you do. I'll push and scoop all of it. If there's a lot of debris in there, like rocks and mud and whatever else, it's getting scooped out anyway with everything. But I'm not going to go through and make sure that it's absolutely pristine in there. That's not gutter cleaning. Gutter, if your water's flowing through your gutters because they're cleaned, then that's the point. Same thing with snow removal. If you're out there trying to make snow removal look like Somebody out there was just doing it because they loved it. You're doing it wrong. You're spending too much time doing it. It's to make sure snow removal so you can get your car in and out of your driveway. Or that you can walk and not fall on your sidewalks. All that fun stuff. That's what it is. Same thing with gutters. But if you're not doing gutter cleaning, do it and advertise it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Now is the time. Another perk, especially in the colder areas. Our gutters are going to freeze. So you're not going to get everybody done. But if you don't get them done and it freezes, I always call those people that are still on the floor. Hey, I apologize. You know, we just got in this too late. Usually it's because they called too late. But, you know, we, we did book this a little bit too late and those gutters are froze up. But what we're going to do is we still have you on the floater. As soon as we get a nice day, we're going to be out there. Don't you worry. And what that ends up happening is springtime, it kind of goes back over. And you get a nice little boost in spring from the gutters that are covered over. And it just has to be warm enough that they're not frozen. It's before you do windows, you still got that. Super, super awesome. By the way, also, I would still send out gutter stuff in pre-spring with postcards and everything else because a lot of people forgot to do the gutters. They went all winter and saw the gutters were full and uh, spring. Spring is huge gutter season too, even if you don't think about it. But anyway, that's gutters. Don't, Don't hate life, but make some money. Gutters suck. Anyway, snow removal is another service that now is the time to advertise for. Snow removal is also probably, it's not, it's a fun job, you know, to do. It's not bad, but the downside is your mother nature's whipping boy. You work only when she lets you. You work only the hours that you can, which every single time in Wisconsin, we start 2 a.m. Because the snow always starts happening around dinner time and by 2 a.m. it's stopped, usually. This is almost always we start at 2 a.m. What are you doing at 2 a.m.? Sleeping? Yeah. But guess what? You still have to do 8 to 10 hours of snow, if not more. Longest time that I ever did snow removal was uh, 60, no, yeah. It was 62 hours, almost three solid days of snow. We had this giant snow. I was picking up crews. We only ran one truck because everything, you couldn't drive anywhere. It was awful. I'd pick up one crew of guys and then after i think it was six or eight hours i would drop them off pick up the other crew and then drop them off and then pick up the other and they were just sleeping the the time that they had off you know it was crazy but uh you never know how much or how hard or how little you're going to be working there's a lot of years snow doesn't happen now if you are uh you know in the idea that the w- earth is warming up that actually means more snow it doesn't sound right But it does, because when it's too cold, it can't snow. But 
with that being said, Wisconsin also was like negative 50 plus or yeah, less than negative 50 this year with the windshield, like it has been for the past few years. So yeah, there you go. A, one of the reasons I moved to North Carolina, by the way, but snow's great. If, if it does snow, it's great. The other thing is, is if you have trucks already, you can have a couple of snow blowers, maybe put plows if you're running full size trucks. And now you have some winter money on top of route. A lot of winter guys have to do route. If you shut down through, hey, you know, December 1st, we shut down or, you know, whatever. Some people are December 15th, whatever time. That is the time you shut down. Anyway, you're not doing snow. But for those of you who want something else to do, that's super, super beneficial. You're charging, say, 35 bucks a driveway or get out there with a snowblower. It takes you 10 minutes because you got, you know, a guy or two. It's snow money. You know, you're working big, long days. But when it does happen, it's nice to kind of make that ching. Parking lots, whatever. Look up snow. I'm not, this isn't the snow episode. We have those. Go look at it um, uh, somewhere else. Another one is Christmas lights. That is this time of year. You're booking people up. And those guys who are doing that are starting like super, super soon to put stuff up. They have to because the season's so technically short of when they can put them up to when people are actually having them on to when they take them back down but christmas lights is another another awesome one by the way we talked with josh trees uh and we have that episode go search wcr nation christmas lights it'll pull it up it's got like a picture of santa with some lights and whatever um but uh, that's another service that you need to be advertising now this is all stuff that if you miss it you're gonna miss it right you can't advertise gutter cleaning in December. It just doesn't happen. You can't start advertising Christmas lights in December because a lot of people already either have them up or it's too short. They're not going to do that. The rule unofficially is you can turn your lights on Christmas lights after Thanksgiving. So when I put my lights, I go a little, little above and beyond berserk, but when I put my lights on, I set them up in November and then when it comes time to turning them on, it's the day after Thanksgiving. Anyway, it's unofficial. But Christmas lights is another one. Think about it. It's another really nice add-on that you can uh, think about, but has to be advertised now. So do that. Think about it. And uh, yeah. Um, the biggest thing you have to remember and the hardest thing for people to remember is that you should never be advertising when it's slow. It's slow for a reason. Advertising does not work in our industry for you to advertise only when you don't have work because you will send out as much stuff as people kill themselves. I know companies who have ended their companies because they've spent everything they did in the winter trying to make more money. Could have made it through winter probably, but they spent every dime they had trying to get through and they just bankrupted themselves. Had no money then in spring to advertise just was a huge thing, especially in the new newer people who don't quite get that concept. You advertise when it is hot. When it's hopping and you can't be any busier, oh my, that's when you advertise. I know it sounds weird, but what you're doing is, if you're super, 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 super busy right now and you're booked out four weeks, guess what? You book people because it's in their brain for week number five. Higher if you're really that far out, but you know what I'm saying. You book out as far as, hey, you know, this is the busiest time of year. I'm sorry, we're going to have to get to you in a couple of weeks, blah, blah, blah. That's what you do is because you feel it in their brain because guess what? December 1st comes, people aren't going, man, we should get our windows done, right? January 1st comes, no one's like, let's get our windows cleaned. It just doesn't happen if you're in a colder climate or a lot of climates other than you guys in like California or Southern Florida where they're getting all the snowbirds, right? So you have to advertise. You have to push as hard now as you do for spring. You know how hard it was in spring, how hard you pushed, how hungry you were? That has to be fall. And if it's not, it's because you're worn out. Guess what? We all sit on our butts during winter. All of a sudden, spring comes, we're hungry, we're poor, we just... Argh. That has to be you now. Because now is when you're making your winter money. The money that holds you through. The money that if you make it through winter, it's the money you use for advertising. It's the money that makes you more money. Everybody buys stocks. Not everybody. You know what I'm saying. People buy stocks. Stocks is investing money 
in other people's company. You hope for a dividend. A lot of people do not invest in themselves as the stock. Has to be. Has to be done that way. Either way. Go and do it. Now's the time. Make the big push. Most importantly, if you need supplies, call me. 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone. Text me. If you like the podcast, do like Mark did last week. Just text me and be like, yo, dude, your 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 podcast has helped me. There's nothing better. I stare into this little itty bitty hole right there in my camera every single week. And then I click load and do the rest of it. But I've never, there's nobody sitting here, nobody watching me. People who call me and let me put orders in, that is like the true version of a thank you. And I know I'm not doing this for things, blah, 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 blah. I'm doing it'd be great to make, you know, that's how I make my cheddars for you guys ordering. But thank you. Thank you is all I'm trying to say. All you people who order, people out there who religiously order from me. Absolutely awesome. Every order, like, hey, man, I need some rubber. $15 order I put in. Absolutely awesome. You will never, ever, 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 ever bother me when you want to place an order. So do that. Again, 862 312 2026. Um, so the code this week for 15% off is salt and pepper, man. The code is salt and pepper. Bonus points if you spell it right. Uh, that'll get you 5% off your order at windowcleaner.com with me. Don't be like the dude who yelled at me because he can't follow directions. If you want your discount, you had to order through me and I can do that for you and it would be absolutely epic. 862-312-2026. Thank you, guys. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for your words of affirmation. Thank you for just texts that randomly say you're awesome, say that my nose is crooked, or they don't like my new haircut, or whatever. I don't care, man. I just like hearing from you guys, really. So thank you very much. Go out there. Uh, do everything I said because it could potentially help you, or at least review it. Go back and watch and listen to all the other episodes. Make sure to leave a review. Make sure to leave your thumbs up if you're on YouTube. Make sure to order supplies through me. Virtual high five. But most importantly, go out there and be epic.